It's been extremely hard to find work. When they want to schedule an interview over the phone, they start asking me questions, and one of the questions is, have you been convicted of a crime? And when I tell them yes, because I'm being honest, they tell me, well, we can't hire you. Getting women with criminal histories jobs is an issue that's pressing right now. California has been ordered to release thousands from the state prisons. Most of these women were convicted of minor and non-violent offenses after living through poverty and domestic violence themselves. All they want is to move on with their lives and to get work to support their families. But what we are seeing is that they're being released to a world that closes off these opportunities. The majority of the clients coming through here have some kind of um, criminal history or are trying to get out of the criminal justice system. It becomes a barrier with them. Some of them just give up. Uh, they're like, forget this, and they stay on government assistance, government welfare, or doing the old, old things that they know how to do. Education and employment seems so far away that they're, they're not able to achieve it, and they get frustrated and they give up. When I got out, I was so desperate because I knew if I didn't find a job that I would go back to things that I did to support myself, um, being a female. And I just, I didn't want to resort back to that lifestyle because it's just, um, it's really um, horrible. <laughs> Past history would come up, even though I wasn't that same person from back then. When you mark off on the application, I have misdemeanor, I feel like right away they're judging you. I didn't have a car. I didn't always have money for the bus, and I really needed a job. Anywhere I could walk, I went and applied. So there was a Denny's, there were a few gas stations, I think there was a Lucky's Market, there were some movie theaters, there was a Target. I've applied at those places, and I've never heard back, so I presume that it's due to my background. I have excellent organizing and coordinating skills. My qualifications are there. They don't want to hear it. I feel like I'm being stereotyped because of my past. You know, employment is one of the key factors in order to reduce recidivism. And reducing recidivism is the key for us to make our community safer. Certainly what we've seen with studies is that stable employment helps in reducing recidivism. If somebody has hope, if somebody believes, you know, that they can support their family, then they're not going to run into trouble with the law as much. So much of the time, it's about having stability. I think in the, in the case of women, it becomes sometimes even more acute uh, because they often are the ones that the family depends on. They have young kids that are depending on mom because mom is the only thing that they have. My son was three years old when I was incarcerated. He's, he'll be 13 next month on the 10th. He's 12. I explained it to him. You know, mommy can't do this and mommy can't do that because I don't have a job. I want to work. I really think that, and I see with a lot of my clients, that they work extra hard when given an opportunity. And are, because so many doors have shut for them, and when somebody finally says, okay, I'm gonna give you a shot, they work extremely, extremely hard. And I hear back from employers the same way, that they're, they're, they'll definitely hire somebody with a conviction again, if given the opportunity, because they work twice as hard as the next. It's kind of a struggle sometimes getting my foot in the door to get employment, but once I get my foot in that door, um, they keep me forever and they love me. I, they know I'm a reliable employee. I live my life today with integrity. I'm honest. Now, when I do, um, I work in the mental health um, field. My clients usually come straight from prison or they've been out of prison for a little while. Um, what I do with my clients, I try to reconnect them 
um, become more productive citizens in the, um, out here in the county. The Women's Policy Institute is a program to train women of grassroots organizations to do policy work. I went to Sacramento. We made appointments with um, different senators on bill ideas that we possibly want to do. It was, it was great, yeah. <laughs> what would happen if we let women like Siobhan, Flora, and Victoria work? They would be able to support themselves and become economically self-sufficient. They would be able to support their own children and their families. They would be able to contribute to their communities. What would happen is that we would all be better off. to be able to take care of myself, provide a roof over my head and for my son, and to pay my bills, and I don't want to rely on the state to take care of me. I want to work, and I want to be productive.